But tonight, our top story, the Omicron wave, just when will it peak? Because today, India's daily case load is near 2 lakhs. And this does not include those at times who are testing at home and being found positive. The focus is on the big cities. Mumbai is where the wave started. It's now spread to Delhi, which registered another spike today. In fact, in Mumbai too, after four consecutive days of a decline, the cases have crept up again. So is the wave peaking in these big cities and will it travel then to other parts of the country? What exactly is the situation with this wave? In a moment, I'll be joined by Brahmar Mukherjee, who's tracking this with her data. But first, our top story tonight. A day after showing a small dip in COVID cases, here comes the surge. India has recorded over 1,94,000 cases in the past 24 hours. The daily positivity rate has crossed 11%. High positivity rate in some states is a cause for concern. According to the centre, Maharashtra has a positivity rate of 22.39%. West Bengal, 32.18%. And Delhi, 23.1%. And in pole-bound Uttar Pradesh, the rate has jumped to 4.47%. Amidst the huge surge in COVID infections, the Indian Council of Medical Research has eased testing criteria. Now you don't need to test if you are asymptomatic or in contact with a confirmed case but have no symptoms or have been discharged from home isolation or COVID facility. The government, however, has cautioned people against treating Omicron as common cold. Urged everyone to get vaccinated. Omicron is not common cold. Society ki zimmewari hai ki isko slow kare. Individual ki zimmewari hai ki apni protection kare. Mask se. Family ki protection kare. Mask laga ke. Aur protection kare. Vaccine leke. Jo bhi chhoote hai. Jinko bhi due hai. The fact remains that vaccination is our a um, very important, crucial, critical pillar. Mumbai has seen a dip in its daily tally for four consecutive days before rising on Wednesday. Experts believe the curve may have flattened in the maximum city. So, endemic hmm. hone ki sambhavna uh, April se uh, July tak bhot jada hai. Main aasha wadi hu ki humko COVID, hmm. jaise hum dengue malaria ya normal flu dekhte hai, वैसे ही उसके ट्रीटमेंट जून जुलाई से होए और इसकी संभावना बहुत ज्यादा है मेनी एक्सपर्ट्स हैड अर्लियर सेड इंडिया विल रीच द पीक सून द बिग सर्ज सो फार हैज बीन नोटिसेबल इन बिग मेट्रोस द क्वेश्चन रिमेंस हाउ लॉन्ग विल इट टेक फॉर द थर्ड वेव टू पीक अक्रॉस इंडिया इज द वर्स्ट येट टू कम और आर वी पास्ट इट ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे so the first big question that I want to pose tonight is, when will this COVID wave peak? That's the question that I want to raise. And joining me now is someone well equipped to answer that. Professor Brahmar Mukherjee is a data scientist and epidemiologist and researcher at the University of Michigan, tracking this COVID wave right from day one. Appreciate your joining us, uh, Professor Mukherjee. The question I raise that when will this wave peak? We are looking at about two lakh uh, daily caseload at the moment. How high could it go? How do you see the trajectory of this wave as per the modeling that you've been doing? Uh, thank you so much, Rajdeep, for having me on the show. And it's a pleasure to talk to the viewers again. Uh, so what we see is a little bit reassuring uh, from a public health perspective is that uh, we see Delhi, Maharashtra, West Bengal, some of the states which uh, bloomed early to uh, peak early and uh, it is in the next seven or ten days and we see that there has been a slowdown in terms of the growth of the trajectory um, for example delhi had an r or basic reproduction number of around uh, two and now it has come down to about 1.4 so uh, i i am hopeful test positivity rates have really lowered slightly so i am hopeful 
that some of the states are going to peak. Uh, the Some of the states which have been in the news will uh, peak in the next seven days or so. And what we see is that India peaking late January, because it is always the case for India, as we have talked several times, that it is a multiple nations within a nation. There is usually a cascade of peaks coming through different regions, states and union territories. And that's the pattern that we see for the third wave as well. And as a result, the national case count we see to be peaking around late January. Uh, it, as far as where that peak value is, I think that whatever we say is dependent on how scalable testing is. So reported case counts really do not mean much at this point. Uh, but we do see that the projected number of fatalities is much, much less than the second wave. So if you recall the second wave, uh, ended in about 414,000 daily reported cases and 4,500 daily reported deaths at its peak. What we project right now is about the same kind of number of reported cases, but about 800, 500 to 800 daily reported deaths. I don't want to minimize a life by reducing mm -hmm. it to numbers, but it's definitely much less about 25%, one-fourth of what we saw, or one-fifth of what we saw before. So let me summarize what you've just said. You've said that the states or the cities that have seen a high in Omicron or COVID cases in the last two weeks, likely to peak in the next week. Uh, the total case load could be over 4 lakhs a day, but deaths much lower. So broadly, are we seeing, therefore, that this Omicron wave peaks very fast and also dips very fast. Is that the sense? Can we say that with some element of confidence that this is a very different wave, therefore, uh, to Delta? It will not sustain over an extended period of time. Uh, that's what it seems like that, you know, given the high transmissibility of Omicron, it's really ripping through the population and spreading like wildfire. That also implies that it is it cannot be sustainable for a long period of time, elongated period of time. And we see a tall and skinny behavior here. You know, we are seeing though the positivity rate, uh, Professor Mukherjee, has gone up from about 1.1% at the start of the year. It's now about 11, 12%. Should we be looking at test positivity rate, uh, given that there is a huge question mark over testing itself? Or should we be looking at hospitalization rates? As you mentioned, hospitalization much lower this time than during the Delta wave. Should the focus be on hospitalizations, so long as hospitalizations are under control, we remain relatively in control of uh, this third wave? Yeah, ideally in an utopian world where you have the perfect data, I would completely agree with you that we need to really focus on hospitalization rates. But we do not have hospitalization data uniformly available across India. If we did have that, the rate of hospitalization for COVID and with COVID, because we do know that there is a lot of incidental COVID uh, discoveries in the hospital, but people who are for COVID, if we okay. had that granularity of numbers and how, what is the capacity available of ICU beds, hospital beds, ventilators, if we could track that data nationally, then I'll completely agree with you. But we do not have that data, and it, it just the test positivity rate and the RT-PCR test is all we have nationally. So I still think that it is important right. as sort of a surrogate marker, not the perfect marker. And I completely agree that we should have new dashboards. In a vaccinated population, the case mm -hmm. curve is not always predictive of fatalities and hospitalization. So we should really have uh, dashboards which report these things daily at every state, at every union level, so we can track the magnitude of the pandemic better. Not just that, we can tune our public health interventions accordingly without uh, overkill or uh, an under-pitched uh, uh, intervention. You know, at the moment, the states which I'm looking at where COVID cases have gone up are Delhi, Maharashtra, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka. You seem to suggest that while these areas could peak uh, in the next 7 to 10 days, new areas will emerge. Now, 
Uh, the worry is that many of these are uh, the election battleground states where vaccination uh, levels are much lower, uh, let's say, in a Punjab compared to uh, uh, in, in a Mumbai or a Delhi. Is that a worry for you that uh, maybe uh, the next ra wave within this wave will be in some of the states that are lesser vaccinated outside the big cities? So this is an excellent point because vaccination is the key because you see that so many people are sick right now, but thank God or like, you know, thanks to public health and thanks to science and thanks to vaccines that very few have to go to the hospital. So the situation looks very different from second wave because the immunity wall or the immunity quilt of India has changed substantially with natural infection plus vaccination. If you look at data mm -hmm. from other countries, mm -hmm. the Omicron related hospitalization, a large fraction of that is in the unvaccinated. So in the battleground states, in the states with lower vaccination, I'll strongly urge people to get vaccinated until then to use COVID appropriate behavior. But I am very concerned about the next so it, realm of states that are rising. And we already see if we, we have the mm -hmm. daily tracker, we see Bihar and Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh, many of the states actually rising with an R value around 1.9 and 2. And I am co concerned about what is going to happen with the healthcare capacity. The next 14 to 21 days will because, be very uh, critical to watch. Because these are the states where, as we've been saying, uh, fewer people are double vaccinated and they're large populous states. So are you saying, because we keep saying Omicron is mild and I've got Omicron at the moment, I'm I, I self-isolating at home, but, and I'm double vaccinated. But if you're not double vaccinated, Omicron doesn't stay mild. That What you're su suggesting, therefore, is that in the next phase, in a way of this wave, uh, the wave could prove more deadly. That's why we've got to be more cautious and focus on those states where the vaccination re le uh, levels remain low. Exactly. And also we have to remember that hospitalization and ICU uh, admissions are lagged metrics. So we might see the cases peak, but hospitalizations may follow. So I think it's too early to make a call right now and we should be very cautious. And we can see that early intervention, the timing so, of the intervention, the timing of our action really matters mm -hmm. much more than the stringency or the duration. We have to sort of in intercept the virus curve early enough and hear the silent proof footsteps of the virus mm -hmm. before we actually see it. So I'd be very cautious, very watchful for the next 14 to 21 days. You're saying 14 to 21 days, that takes us to end of January. In conclusion, do you believe that this wave will be over and done with by the end of February? Uh, or do you believe that this could, uh, given the fact that we are this subcontinental sized country, pick up different spots and extend into March? I do believe that uh, the wave is going to be over by February. And again, when I'm talking that I'm, I'm, I'm not certain, all the models are wrinkled with assumption. It all depends on human behavior. We do not know what an event like Ganga Sagar Mala is going to do, uh, but we we are we feel mm -hmm. like looking at the statistical models and mathematical models. It seems like end of January reaching a peak and subsiding uh, by February is the most likely scenario, but there could be worst case scenario. Uh, I do not want to practice data astrology. I want to practice data science. So I'll uh, end with that realm of uncertainty. That's a fair way to end, uh, uh, Professor Mukherjee. Uh, as always, uh, thank you very much for sharing your wisdom on this. Uh, thanks very much, Professor Mukherjee, thank for joining me. Thank you so much.